So here's the brand new banana slip walk final action. Walks along, slips up. Uh, I now need to just do these final little bits of animation. So select the armature in pose mode, go into the armature panel, shift select the layer with the other bones, predominantly the fingers and the toes. Um, select uh, in the left hand at the moment, select the, the bones. I'm, I'm going back to a glo uh, local orientation and I'm choosing uh, individual origins as the uh, axis around uh, the rotation. So you can see those little reference uh, axes lines when I hit the uh, rotate around the X uh, axis. That's every single bone is now rotating around its own uh, local X axis. Uh, I'm just posing this uh, hand. I find as people walk, their hands are, uh, the fingers are slightly curled uh, a bit more down towards the final bone. Uh, closing this one up a bit, it seems to be splayed out a little bit. Now select all the bones and I and rotation and that puts a rotation uh, keyframe on, on those finger bones. Here's the uh, right hand, same deal, select the uh, thumb bones here, rotate around X, uh, select the, all of the finger bones. With the brush selector, rotate around X, deselect the first bones, rotate a little bit more, Deselect the next bones, rotate the last bones a little bit more again, and I don't know. It's a personal thing. Um, I seem to think that's that looks nice and uh, natural in terms of uh, the attitude of fingers of a hand. Um, select all the bones again. Uh, use the brush selector. I'm trying not to select the hand bone because that's got a baked animation uh, curve on it from the BVH. I want to leave that as it is without mucking around with it. Brush select all of the right hand and now deselect. Uh, I'm making a mess of that. Okay, got it all. Only the fingers have got eye rotation. And that's the hand fingers. If we scroll along, or scrub along to when, he, when the slip actually starts about here. In the graph editor, shift D to, to copy those keyframes. X to constrain to the X axis. Move along until about uh, until they're about on the, the the keyframe indicator there. Advance a little bit further. Alt R to release all those uh, rotations and uh, uh, rotate on X and just open the hands right up. Uh, they'll be the fingers will be splayed out in shock. I rotation for the next uh, for that new attitude. Uh, move along towards the end as he hits the. Uh, lands on his back, select that one keyframe, hit K to select all of the others on that keyframe, shift D to um, copy, X to constrain, move along to the, the, the keyframe indicator, go towards the end of the animation, Alt R again to release that um, that rotation and just a, just a little more on X uh, to relax them up again, I rotation, and that's the hands done. So he will walk along and uh, uh, splay his fingers in, in fright and uh, relax them on landing. So here I've opened up the layer with the camera and uh, an empty I've called camera focus. The camera has a, a, a track two on, the, on this empty. Uh, just so I can get a better view of what's going on. The empty has a, a copy location on the hip uh, on Y direction only, so that's why it doesn't bump up and down. The camera, camera has a copy location on the empty, plus the track too. So now uh, we move along with the character and I can get a better look at what's going on. Those hands look a lot better, relaxed at his side. Um, let's just go and isolate the, the character again. Now the head is a little bit too far bent forward. So again, that's an easy fix. I'll uh, isolate the X rotation on the keyframes, X, G, and Y, and uh, just adjust that very slightly. I mean, he, there you go, that's it. Uh, that's all he needs. That now, again, that looks like a bit more of a natural, natural uh, attitude to the head. Uh, the hand, I now want to adjust that. 
on the z-axis of isolated z, gy in the um, the graph editor, f-curve editor. Uh, as it is, the hands are sort of sticking straight out from the from the forearm. But of course, all these appendages have gravity acting on them, so uh, it's just a matter of relaxing all of these poses. Uh, the right hand now, let's have a look at that. Uh, let me just scrub till he's in a reasonable... There we go, that looks like a pretty good position. And in fact, he looks like he needs adjusting on the, on the y-axis. So let's uh, isolate y rotation, g and y. And there you go, Hands are, that hand is now a bit more fore and aft. That looks... Uh, more natural to my eye anyway. Uh, of course, anyone else will adjust the, um, the, uh, the actions uh, to suit their particular taste, but I'm happy with that now. Uh, I need to do the same on this hand, I think, just adjust the Y, G and Y until it's in the right uh, attitude. Yeah, cool. And that even relaxes it a bit more, so it, it flops down a bit more. Finally, we're on to the toes. Remember, they poke through the floor. I've enabled automatic keyframing, so every time I move the bone, it will insert a keyframe on the uh, in the F curve for me. So here at the beginning, frame one, that back foot is uh, at the extreme pose. I, I just advance forward three frames at a time, and then readjust the uh, attitude of the of the toe bone. Uh, one, two, three. Give it a wee nudge on the left. In the, in the F-curve editor, you can see the new keyframes uh, appearing every time I move it. One, two, three, uh, drop it back, uh, Alt-R, and it drops back. Then touch the, the widget, and it puts the keyframe in for you. Uh, again, one, two, three, adjust, one, two, three, adjust. Uh, and on through. Now I'll admit I did a lot more work than I'm showing here for this walk cycle. There were times when the feet were, were starting to disappear through the floor again. Um, I made some adjust adjustments to the hip and the angle of the uh, calf and then undid all that because it, it just wasn't working out. In the end, towards the end, you'll see I just do a little bit of an adjustment uh, to the hip at the very end of the cycle where he launches into the into the final slip. Uh, one, two, three, uh, and adjust. And touch the, the widget and a new keyframe goes into the into the uh, F curve editor for you. So as I say, I can spend hours doing this. I, this is part of the job that I love. I, I, I tweak and I uh, become obsessive about uh, <laughs> exactly how I want it to do. Uh, I really don't need to go into this detail. I could have left the toes completely because I have a suspicion that we're not even going to see the feet of the character um, uh, when it when it's uh, acting its its part in the in the scene. But never mind. Here we go. Uh, just one final bit. You can see here how the front of that foot is falling. No matter how much I, I adjust the toe, it's now below um, ground level. So I'm isolating the uh, hip again. Not yeah, the hip bone. That's a, an actual hip. Uh, the hip bone uh, going to the, the this particular keyframe on the Y location, enabling proportional editing. G and Y with only a small amount of influence on the proportional editing and just slightly adjusting the position of the hip bone on Y so now that the front of that foot doesn't fall through the, the floor and at this point he leaps into the air. Alt R to release the rotation, touch the widget to put the key frame in and immediately now I'm finished turn off automatic keyframing. The number of times I've put keyframes on cameras and meshes because I've forgotten to disable automatic keyframing. Uh, doesn't bear thinking about. Okay, give him a floor to make sure he's not going through a floor. S and 20, make it big enough to cover the, uh, the field of view. Uh, and, and 
that part is done. Okay, next episode we're going to do the jacket.